All right, folks, we are back for, I believe, Challenge 45 with the robot. Man, I, I'm, uh, we, we'll have a celebration once we get to 50 against the robot. But here's what we got this week, folks. We have a non-best hand match point tournament here, or challenge. We're going to play 10 boards. We're playing match points. It's non-best hand, so we're going to see kind of normal bridge auction, auctions, we hope. And this is a classic example of if we were playing a best hand tournament, we would kind of know the limits of our partner's hand, but because we're playing a, an unrestricted tournament, partner could have a massive hand here. So we're going to start with our just one spade response. Remember, we're at the one level, we're making a forcing bid. This could be six, this could be 26, right? We're just gonna bid a spade, see what we get on the way back. And there is one no trump. Make your call, folks, what is it? Uh, this depends on the type of system you're playing, but most of you, I would expect, are playing some version of new minor forcing. And take a look, folks, minor, major, no trump, new minor, right? This is how we show an invitational or better hand while also continuing to explore the possibility of a major suit fit. And we should see that we need to continue to explore that because we have exactly five cards in this spade suit over here, right? So at this point, we know we have about an invitational hand with our good 11. In fact, it's a really good 11, but we are not sure about where our possible game could be. If partner has three spades, not only does our hand get a little bit better, but now we wanna play spades. And if partner doesn't, we have a really solid invitational hand for no trump. And again, we're playing match points. So being aggressive here isn't as important as getting the precise bid that we want to have or our contract that we want to be in. So here, minor, major, no trump, new minor. Now, some of you play two-way new minor forcing, and I'll let you guys discuss with your partnership what your auction would be. But here, our partner has now shown three cards support in that spade suit. Now, recognize our hand isn't necessarily a huge amount better because our shortness value is in the hand that has the long trumps, right? So it's this shortness isn't necessarily as full value as it would be kind of traditionally if we have the, the short trump hand, but still... Think about this. Is it is it a good, is our hand better than it was a minute ago when we didn't have a fit? I would say yes. And because I don't like to leave the robot uh, in charge of our destination here, I'm just going to actually jump to four spades, put us in game, and think I have a pretty reasonable shot of making with these sorts of cards. <laughs> oh my goodness. The first thing we see is the best thing, folks. Well, actually, we see a couple of interesting things. Number one, our partner having three small clubs is the best piece of information. And actually, that's the first thing I saw. It reminded me of like a poker hand where, you know, you, you see the card in what they call the window when they put the flop up. It's like, boom, that is magic because we have shortness in our hand. So we don't want to have values in this suit, especially if they're not the ace, right? And that's exactly what we bought here. So we've also bought interesting in diamonds because uh, in this case, we have eight cards in that suit. We have some holes in it and we'll see how we're going to play that later but at this point we are going to certainly win this trick and i'm going to win it in my hand right now and here i'm just going to kind of confuse the situation by winning the ace and now i'm going to actually just draw trump and lead diamonds uh i if i had more trump and dummy i would kind of strip out those hearts and maybe get a little bit of a lead issue for them coming back but i only have three trumps and dummy and i'm gonna have to use them all to draw trump and now I'm just gonna play a low diamond. I'm hoping to see an honor or that card. I love that. Here we're gonna take a traditional finesse. And this is that double finesse that we know about, right? We're missing the king and the queen. We're gonna take two finesses. This time we were missing the 10, folks, but that is not too bad here when we see that coming out. And here we're either gonna see an honor or we're gonna take a finesse, right? So here with the king 10 being smushed in there, it seems pretty likely that that card is either getting played or they're showing out at this point. And now, we have a claim. Uh, we took 11 tricks on this, and that looks like the best we're going to do. And noticed, folks, what would have happened if we forgot we played new minor forcing? Well, we would have bid two no trump to invite, and partner, I don't know, partner probably wouldn't have accepted, but a club lead would have absolutely destroyed us. And do you think it would be hard for this player to find a club lead? I wouldn't think so, right? So recognize the importance of finding your major suit fits. Even after sh partner shows just this balanced hand here, we still want to explore our fits, especially when we have extra shape, right? And in a match point circumstance, folks, we really, we, we want to get to the highest scoring game, but we certainly want to get to the game we can make. <laughs> and the only game we can make here is spades, right? And, and uh, no trump is just an absolute 
destruction. All right, so here, that is our what looks like our best uh, possible result on this particular board. So let's jump over to the next board and notice that uh, here's our non-best hand scenario popping up, passed to us. We just have an eight count, we're out of this auction. We'll see where we end up on the way back. Wow, three diamonds, check, check to us. Nothing to do here, folks. We First of all, we don't want to be, <laughs> we didn't have enough to open the bidding, first of all. Our partner didn't act over three diamonds. And here, you would expect kind of a split deck type of hand with maybe partner having the best hand at the table. Uh, and recognize we have eight points. A left-hand opponent is showing less than 10, and right-hand opponent didn't open. So the best hand at the table is probably our partner's hand, and they chose to do nothing. And, and notice as well, it seems pretty likely that either partner short or the dummy is really short in diamonds. If partner short in diamonds, they certainly would stretch to bid. The fact that they didn't do that is, is a huge win here. So don't think you have to balance to save partner. You're out of this hand. And look, partner drawing Trump with a peer, apparently their singleton ace here. Uh, I want to give partner a little bit of a suit preference signal here. So I'm going to tell partner to lead a spade or a heart, I hope, right? And this is Trump suit preference. Uh, the robot has no idea about this. This is just for your benefit, folks. Notice I have three worthless diamonds. And you might think, hey, the 10 might take a trick. No, nah, not. I mean, it might actually disrupt communication because it avoids them overtaking the queen of diamonds, I suppose. But here, um, I, I, I just want to give partner the clearest signal possible, right? So, so I want to tell them that one of those higher ranking suits is necessary. And the, re the reason this should be that is when we're playing trumps, especially when we have worthless ones, we're not giving any signal whatsoever usually. So this is a free information gathering position and information transmission position for the times where you have worthless trumps. If you play high and then low in those sequences, you're suggesting you prefer one of the higher ranking suits. And if you play low and then high, you're either suggesting you prefer one of the lowers or you have no preference whatsoever. So here with that 10 of diamonds, I'm trying to tell my partner that I want one of those higher ranking suits led. And here now maybe we'll get uh, the, the best bank for our buck here. Partner's not gonna pay attention. I I would usually encourage here, but I'm okay with a spade return as well. <laughs> so here, perfect. We're going to give count in this situation to Claire's leading that suit. That's probably their last amount of points over there. And it looks like they're trying to set up clubs at this point. So yeah, let's go here, partner. Now, once we get in, if we get in, let's hope. Uh, I'm not going to, oh, I guess, no, I'm not going to rough this because we know Declare's out and we know partner has the queen. So at this point, we'll force them to rough. Now they can't really get to dummy more than this one time here. And now we will hop up with that king. We will also start cashing our carts. Maybe partners are out over there. It doesn't matter. And Declare just has whatever they have left here. Maybe they have a spade to lead. I'm not counting, right? These are hands you just don't have to count, really. Either they have it or they don't. You've done your job here. You've just put them back in your hand. It's a pretty easy hand to count, to be honest. If I if I had the foresight to kind of clue you guys into this, we could have just started counting West's hand. Uh, right after the opening lead, here's how you would do it. Right, You, you notice that the Ace of Diamonds is led, and then a heart is through. Boom, boom, boom. And here, there's the second club. All right, so now we know they had seven diamonds and at least two clubs. And now we've seen a spade and a heart. There's no clubs. Boom, seven, two. And then here they keep drawing. Boom, boom. And now we would kind of understand their entire shape. Seven diamonds. They've shown up with two clubs. They already just showed up with two spades. The previous trick, now two hearts. Now we have it all. The beauty of this situation for us is it's irrelevant if you're counting or not. You just know it's right to just continue start trying to play tricks and see what Declare has left at the end, which really the, the points on this hand, once you see that ace of clubs come out, you're kind of clued into the fact that West has just nothing else outside of those suits. All right, folks. So let's take a look. Not too bad so far for our match point purposes. I don't really think there's anything different we're going to do in this three diamond contract. Um, it, it, nothing really is going to make a huge difference for us. And we're not really going to do anything as far as opening the bidding on this hand. So I think this is probably an average result, probably for both of these. They both seem pretty normal so far. Um, this is what we're going to start off with tomorrow. And I don't know. Make your call, folks. What do you think I'm going to do? And don't forget, on bridgelesson.com, folks, actually, we had three courses last week. We have three this week, starting with another defense decisions course. That actually releases on Tuesday, and that's just going to have all of uh, – 
a collection of hands where you're going to make defensive decisions in suit contracts. We're going to do normal strategy stuff, counting, and also leads and normal defensive positions in these suit contracts. And then on Wednesday, folks, the bridge quiz back and super popular as usual. Play and defense quiz. We're going to actually go through declare and defense all week. And this is going to be a good quiz of common concepts in both of these veins. You're going to sit as declare and defender and get realistic real world decisions and a repeatable quiz you go home with and continue to go through for the rest of your bridge careers if you like that's the best part about the bridge quiz and then on thursday another declare decisions releases this one got rave reviews last week there's a no trump version of this all of this is on the front page of the site and i'll link it in the comments but if you're going to join those i'll see you there and if not i'll see you right back here for day two of this challenge 45 with the robots pretty good so far let's see if we can clinch a victory later in the week see you then folks